everybody welcome to oxano it's another beautiful day to grow and i'm super excited that you have clicked this episode you're watching this on youtube or listening on podcast i am super excited that you found me my name is chisung if you don't know that already and if this is your first time joining oxano this is a devotional to help you stay consistent in your work with the lord if you've struggled with prayer you've struggled with devotion you've just struggled to grow this is the right place to be and i'm glad that you are here if this is your first time let me know in the comment section and i will give you a shout out i just want to know that you are here either way so please let me know today i will be answering an all too important question it's not really a question it's more like a conversation really and in being here as your growth guide on oxano i have gotten the privilege to talk to that's something very ebotic privilege <laughs> i've gotten the privilege yeah to speak to a number of you and i have had very interesting conversations with several of you and i'm grateful for those opportunities one question i answer all too often is i'm struggling with prayer what do i do and i found that many times the people i speak to are self-aware they know that there is a struggle they know that um their prayer lives could be better they know that their bible study lives could be better and chances are if you're listening to me you know that already as well so many times the problem is not being self-aware of the problem the problem is like you are aware that you are struggling with prayer but you don't know why you are struggling with prayer and this episode is going to help you identify those reasons why and help you tackle those reasons why so i have split the reasons into two there are reasons beyond your control reasons you have nothing to do with and there are reasons within your purview things you can control things you can change let's start for those or start with those outside of your control i'll give you an instance on saturday this past saturday um i was away from my house we had left the house for a couple of days like two weeks roughly um because our transformer blew <laughs> i have never missed dubai as much as i've missed dubai in this past week i used to live in dubai with my husband till the lord asked us to come back to nigeria and we came back glory to god but <laughs> i've never missed dubai so much because ah, there's nothing like a transformer blue even if that happened it'll be fixing hours but this has been a month now we've not had lights we've been burning fuel it's just a very sad situation so this time we had come back home after our hiatus from our house and we were going to put on the gen as usual first of all we tried to find fuel we didn't see fuel to buy so we're like okay we have a little fuel in the gen let's just put on the gen and charge our devices and the fans and let's see where that takes us till tomorrow we got to the house first of all there was a very you know distinct smell when i walked into the house because i cleaned the house before we left but i entered and there was this musty smell so there was no light we tried to put on the gen the gen was not coming on which was already frustrating then i noticed that because it had been raining heavily for the past few weeks and all our windows were closed so it, it had affected part of our furniture and like the the fabric of the chairs and that's why that smell was there so it was like there was mildew on it and it was worrisome so we had to um get the chairs cleaned we had to get the house clean because it was just a lot now imagine coming back and hoping that oh, when i get back home i'll settle down i'll pray you know do my whole devotional routine and then i'll go to bed and tomorrow will be a great day at church and this happens it's a health hazard you don't know if the mildew is dangerous like my husband's allergies were kicking in he was sneezing so badly it was a lot that's a reason you can't control i couldn't control the transformer i tried to control it by us having fuel in our generator we couldn't get fuel the fuel we had it was of no use the gen was not coming on it was too late in the evening to get someone to fix the gen all these things happening are examples of things beyond your control and you've probably experienced this before maybe you plan to go somewhere and be back in 30 minutes but in 30 minutes you're still in traffic going to where you're supposed to go and then you miss the person and then the person is upset and like everything just spirals out of your control it's a part of life it happens 
So if that ever happens to you, that could affect your plans to pray that day. And I know this is out of your control. It's not something you should beat yourself too much for. Let's go to the reasons that are within your control. Number one reason that I see people struggle with prayer is you don't have structures. Like there are times I have conversations and I ask, okay, when will you be able to pray today? And they're like, oh, well, I have class in the morning. Then in the afternoon, I have to do ABCD. Then I have this meeting and I have that meeting. So maybe around six, seven, which is not bad for you to try to make time within your busy schedule. But there's an overarching problem there. The problem that you had relegated your prayer time to when you have time. It's not sustainable. And if you keep doing that, you will keep struggling with prayer. You will keep struggling with devotion. So have structure, have structure. And it's important for you to know what works for you. Like for instance, for me, I used to say I'm not a morning person in the sense that when I wake up, I like to take my time to wake up. Like don't wake me up and start asking me important life questions. Like who's the president of where? Like, pff, let me boot. Okay, so <laughs> I can get you in that regard. But for me, even though I wake up or I like to take my time to wake up, I discovered I do my best work in the morning or my best work when I wake up. I used to want to wake up by a certain time every day. So let's say um, 6 a.m. every day. I wanted to wake up by 6 a.m. every day and like have a rigid structure. But I quickly discovered that that doesn't work for me because sometimes I sleep by 4 a.m. So if I'm sleeping by 4 a.m. and I'm waking up by 6 a.m., I didn't really sleep. I took a nap and then I'll wake up cranky. I don't feel like doing anything I'm supposed to do and I'll feel sleepy during the day. It, it doesn't work. So I found out what worked for me was having my devotion when I wake up. So if I wake up by 8, I'll have my devotion. If I wake up by 12, I'll have my devotion. It doesn't have to be a 9 a.m. or a 12 a.m. So that's a beautiful example of having structure but keeping it flexible now that may vary for you but with this example i want you to try and see the balance between having no structure and having a rigid structure there has to be a balance okay another reason that i find that people struggle with prayer or staying consistent is that you're a lone ranger like you like to paint the appearance that everything is fine, everything is okay. You go to church, ah, brother Jatala Cruz, how are you doing? Oh, we're fine. Glory to God, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Or you, they ask your sister, sister peace, sister praise, sister grace. <laughs> I'm just calling random names right now, but I happen to know some of these people by name. I'm not talking about you. Your names are just fun to use right now. Anyway. And then they say, oh, Sister Grace, Sister Peace, how are you doing today? And you're like, oh, fine, praise God. I just thank God, oh, I'm fine, oh, I thank God, oh. And then everybody believes, ah, Sister Grace is fine, oh, she's great, oh. Or they believe Brother, Brother Jide is fine, oh, he's great, oh. But deep down, you know you're struggling. And you don't talk about it. So nobody knows that you're struggling. And I understand that. There are many settings where people disappoint you in church. You tell somebody you're struggling and then before you know it, they're taking devotion and they use you as example. It's very sad. So I understand that. But if you would grow consistently, you can't afford to live as a lone ranger. Learn to have friends that you can be honest with. And when they ask you, how are you? You can say, I'm not fine. That's the truth. Real life, I'm not fine. And I'm grateful for friends like that in my life, especially as a pastor or as a leader in any capacity because the irony of being a leader is that the more you grow the more people expect from you even when you don't have that much to give so people don't really expect that you struggle or you have things that you're dealing with they just expect that when the work needs to be done you deliver how you deliver is not their business shall I deliver <laughs> <laughs> but you are still a human being and it's one thing that I, I'm so thankful I learned early to stay accountable no matter how high you grow in responsibilities in the kingdom or even your secular life staying accountable so I have friends that if they ask me how are you my answer will not be fine like even when I'm tempted to just say fine I'll calm down okay how am I really if I'm great I'll say oh I'm great I've never been better I'm doing amazing this is moving that is moving if i'm not great i'm like i am stressed i am so stressed and i just tell them it helps you 
it keeps your heart in check and it helps your friends know how they can be there for you i've designed oxano to be very intentional so we have an accountability group which um, you can join through the link in the description box so if you see my poll i send polls every day and in my poll i usually put things like um how are you doing with Oxana today? I put, oh, I'm doing great on top of the world. I do, I put, um, oh, I'm going through it fine. I've not done my tasks. I need some push or help here. Um, I also put, help me, oh, I'm struggling. Yesterday, I put something like, chase me in my dreams. Because I need to know, how are you doing? Like, do you need help? A part of Oxana is not just to release videos every day and then leave you to, you know, catch up if you like. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't want to catch up, I can't beat you. I can't chase you too much. But as much as possible, I want to know where you're struggling and how I can come in. And a lot of you have responded so well to those polls and they are helpful. Nobody's going to judge you. Everyone has experienced the struggle that you're currently experiencing, myself inclusive. So we are all here together in this. So I want you to join the accountability group if you have not done that already. Nobody spams. On the accountability group i can assure you that it's strictly for the purpose of your growth on oxano so please join it if you haven't done that already to wrap up this video i'll share tips that would help you stay afloat when it comes to your prayer life number one tip is a no-brainer set structure set structures that allow you grow so you can take my example and let your structure be that you would pray every time when you wake up or you make sure you pray um before you go to bed but i don't like that before you go to bed one because you can doze off two seconds into the prayer or you can leave it to where your eyes already closing you will not say okay let me pray it's not it's not sustainable at least for me you uh -huh. <laughs> so uh if it works for you do you but it doesn't work for me okay and then have growth systems so for me apart from my personal time of devotion i love tuning into my church devotion now it happens every day by 8 p.m on mixlr and I never miss it. If I do miss it, I usually go back to where it was recorded on Mixer and I stream it again. I prioritize it and it does not have to be a pastor or a deacon leading the devotion. I don't even check the schedule to know who is leading. I just know a fellow believer is leading devotional and um, leading the devotion today and I am going to join and I'm always blessed. Like there's never been a time where I join and I not get blessed and it's such an amazing thing. So it's part of my growth systems. And then when I run errands or you know I am doing something around the house, I listen to music, I put on a sermon and I listen. I just create a system around me that encourages my spirit even when I'm not actively praying or actively studying my Bible in that moment. The last thing I would say is be spontaneous. Like, don't wait for a specific time to do something. Don't wait for a specific time. Like, if I have gist for my husband now, and let me just see the time. Okay, right now as I'm recording this, this is 7.52 p.m. If I have hot gist for my husband now, and I say, oh, what an odd time, 7.52 p.m. How will I tell my husband by 7.52 p.m. that I have hot gist for him? Let me wait for 8 p.m. is a perfect time. You don't do that. It doesn't even cross your mind to do that. But you do that many times with prayer. That oh, I want to pray. Oh, let me wait for eight p.m. Let me wait for eight thirty. Let me wait for nine. Before you know it, it's nine. You've slept. So don't do that. When the urge to come, when the urge to pray, I made this mistake before. I had actually recorded this video before, and it was not recording. <laughs> so, and I made the same mistake. When the urge to pray comes. Am I talking too fast today? I'll be this day. See, I did it again. When the urge to pray comes, pray. Aha. God help me. <laughs> Give in to every nudge the Spirit brings your way. Give in to every prompting that the Spirit brings your way. And I'll share more on this tomorrow. So, or during this week, I don't know when I will release that particular video, is on building an atmosphere of worship in your life and i would tell you more about this um thing i just mentioned like giving into the nudges of the spirit it's been a pleasure being your good guide so far Saipa the most fell. <laughs> it's been a pleasure being your good guide so far i pray for your growth and your 
prosperity in the Lord today. I have a couple of tasks for you before you go. So number one, I want you to spend time praying today. I advise I set a timer for 30 minutes and aim to pray no less than 30 minutes. If you go above 30 minutes, that's amazing. But please aim to pray no less than 30 minutes. If you're struggling, I want you to reach out to us on the accountability group and somebody will chip in to pray with you and i'll most likely be that somebody but please reach out on the accountability group then my second task for you today is to read psalm 103 it's one of my favorite psalms it's actually my favorite psalm and i want you to read it today it's going to bless your heart my last task for you today is to share this video with someone a friend of yours someone on your contact may just need these words to encourage them in their growth if you've been encouraged and blessed by this video please please share this with somebody i'll deeply appreciate it and i'm sure whoever stumbles on it would appreciate it as well so till tomorrow i pray for strength for you to do all your tasks today and to grow in the lord see you tomorrow bye